Hello everyone, in this video we'll learn the interrupt concept in microprocessors and we'll mainly focus on the interrupts in MSP430 microcontroller. We'll see the definitions such as interrupt request, interrupt vector, interrupt service routine, and then we'll create three examples in Code Composer Studio to understand the interrupts better. First, let's see what an interrupt is and then let's go through some definitions. An interrupt is an unpredicted event that can pause the CPU from running its programmed code. The reason why I'm saying can pause is that we will be able to set whether the CPU will accept or ignore some types of interrupts. You'll hear the word maskable and non-maskable in the coming slides. As programmers, we can specify what should be done in case of an interrupt so that we take advantage of this property. For example, we can tell the CPU what to do when a push button is pressed or in case a timer value is reached or an ASCII character is received while we are serially communicating with another device. Interrupts are really powerful tools for the programmers. IRQ or interrupt request initiates the interrupt handling process. ISR or interrupt service routine is the piece of code that is run by the CPU in case of an interrupt. Interrupt vector is a memory slot for a specific interrupt type, such as a port interrupt that holds the memory address of the ISR. Now let's see basically what happens in case an interrupt is received. In the normal operation, the CPU is running the code that the programmer has provided, probably in an infinite loop. Now the interrupt comes. It can be a button press or a timer or any other interrupt. As soon as the interrupt comes and if it's not a masked or let's say ignore the interrupt, the CPU stops running the main code. And then the CPU writes the following values to the stack. The program counter which is necessary to remind the CPU where it exited the original code. The status register which is necessary to remember the last status of the environment and the variables that it was working with. Then by the help of the interrupt vector which stores the memory address of the ISR that the programmer has written, the CPU goes to that memory location and executes the code written in the ISR. After the execution of the ISR, we go out of the interrupt state. The program counter, status register and the variables are retrieved from the stack. And the CPU continues to execute its main code from where it exited. Now let's take a look at the types of interrupts in the MSP430. There are three types of interrupts in MSP430. First one is the reset, which has the highest priority. And then we have the non-maskable interrupts and maskable interrupts. As their names imply, maskable interrupts can be masked or ignored. Maskable and non-maskable interrupts are enabled by the related bits. However, non-maskable interrupts are also controlled by the general interrupt enable bit in the status register. Let's remember the 16-bit status register with this table. Fourth least significant bit of the status register is the general interrupt enable bit. This interrupts table is taken from the mixed signal microcontroller datasheet SLA735J and it summarizes the interrupt sources. It indicates the related interrupt flag, whether it's a reset, a maskable or non-maskable interrupt. And in the fourth column, the word address correspond to the interrupt vector address that we just mentioned though, the memory addresses of the ISRs written by the programmer will be stored here. And in the fifth and the last column, the priority of the mentioned interrupt. Here, the higher the number, the more priority the interrupt has. The reason for setting priorities is, in case several interrupts occur at the same time, CPU executes the interrupt which has the higher priority first. Interrupt flags are register bits. As the interrupt occurs, the flag is set. Reset, non-maskable and USCI interrupt flags are in the related interrupt flag registers. Maskable interrupt flags, except USCI interrupt flags, are in the modules register. A CPU interrupt flag is set by the SR bit GIE. When maskable interrupt occurs, GIE and the related modules register flag is set. Now let's see how we can enable interrupts. To enable maskable interrupts, we need to set the GIE and the related interrupt enable bit in the related register. To enable a non-maskable interrupt, setting the related interrupt enable bit is sufficient. If a higher priority interrupt occurs during the execution of a lower priority interrupt, it's called a nested interrupt. This can cause a stack overflow. In MSP430, nested interrupts are prevented by clearing the GIE bit during the execution of an ISR. However, if you set the GIE bit in the ISR, interrupt nesting is enabled. This description is taken from MSP430 user guide. In the interrupt handling process slide, we had shown what the interrupt vector was used for. As the CPU receives the interrupt request and saves the program counter, status register, and the variables, it reaches to the interrupt vector to identify the memory address of the ISR. Here, the screenshot is taken from the MSP430 G2553 header file, and you can see that the interrupt vectors are defined here as constants. 
For example, the one that we will use in our examples in this section, port 1 vector can be seen here. Here in this table, the whole list of the interrupt vectors can be seen. These are also taken from the header file. ISRs can be seen as functions or subroutines which are called by the interrupts. So it's not the programmer that is calling the subroutine, but it's the interrupt itself. Before defining the ISR, we need to set the interrupt vector, and we do that by using the pragma keyword. Here in this screenshot, you can see the definition. Pay attention that the port1 vector is the vector name provided in the header file. While defining the ISR, we use the double underscore interrupt phrase before the definition. Now let's focus on port interrupts. We will use port interrupts in our examples in Code Composer Studio. Port 1 and port 2 can be used as interrupt sources. Each pin can be used for a separate interrupt. However, there is only one interrupt vector for one port, 8 pins. To handle this issue, interrupt flags can be used. Three registers are used to control port interrupts. PXIE interrupt enable register, PXIES interrupt edge select register, PXIFG interrupt flag register. Now let's see these registers in detail. PXIE is used for enabling the interrupt for the specific pin. The related pin should be set to enable the interrupt from that pin. PXIES, if the bit is reset, interrupt occurs in the rising edge. If the bit is set, interrupt occurs in the falling edge. PXIFG, when an interrupt occurs on a pin, that bit is set. Now that we have the necessary theoretical information, let's open Code Composer Studio for creating port interrupt examples. Before I start the examples, I should mention that the links to the codes shown here are provided in the video description. In this first example, we are defining the LED and button as bit 0 and bit 3 respectively. We are going to use these in port 1. In line 6, the watchdog timer is stopped automatically by the CCS. In line 7, we define the P1.0 as output and in line 8, we set this output to 1. In line 9, we enable the port interrupt for P1.3 and in line 10, we set the edge select as falling edge. Here we should remember that the onboard button on the launchpad is an active low button, meaning that when it's released, it provides high voltage and when it's pressed, it provides low voltage. So we'll be able to trigger an interrupt each time we press the button. In line 11, the interrupt flags are reset. In line 12, with the underscore enable underscore interrupt command, we set the GIE bit. You can check this by yourself by using step into after debugging the code and observing the status register in the core registers. Then we create an infinite loop in which nothing is done except waiting for interrupts. In line 15, you can see the interrupt vector definition. And starting from line 16, we have our ISR. In the ISR, first the LED is toggled, then the port interrupt flag is cleared in order to allow receiving new interrupts. Now let's debug the code and see what happens as we start pressing the button on the launchpad. Let's click on resume. And you can see that initially the onboard LED in P1.0 is on. So let's start pressing the button. When I press the button, it's going to be toggled. In the second example, we are going to increase the value of a variable named count each time the button is pressed. So let's debug the code. Let's click on resume. And let's click the onboard button a few times. And let's click on pause. You can see that our value has increased to four since we pressed the button four times. And we can then again resume the code and press the button and the count will be increased each time we press the button. And in this third and the last example, we are again going to increase the values of the variable count by each button press. And then we are going to display it on an LED array by the help of a shift register. You can click on the link above in order to see how the shift register works and how you can connect it to our MSP430 microcontroller. Now let's debug the code. And let's click on resume. Now we can click on the onboard button in order to see the output on the LED array. You 
you can see that the number is increasing and we can see it in binary. This was the end of the video. I hope it's been useful for you. If you have any questions or comments, please write them in the comment section. See you in another video. Thank you for watching. Bye.